Senator to be Tim Sheehy joins me. I never count my chickens before they hatch, Tim Sheehy, but I just talked to John Thune. Sounds pretty good in Montana. Update us on your Senate race, please. Well, I appreciate your confidence, but I'm a superstitious guy, and uh, we still got five days to go. And there was a poll that came out recently that showed us tied. Now, uh, I know folks don't want to believe that, but we got to keep pushing to the finish line, and that's what we're doing. we got Senator Tom Cotton coming out tomorrow. We're going to do a few campaign events around the state. Uh, and we're going to campaign through the weekend all the way to the finish line. But it's looking good. We've had a, a consistent but narrow lead here for the past few months. Can't take that for granted. Uh, we're going we're to campaign like we're behind for the next five days. Um, grassroots around the state, as well as just, you know, work on the phones, making sure we continue to raise that money. And what that money does at this point, we're not buying TV commercials. We're paying door knockers, uh, ballot uh, harvesting operations, making sure we're poll watching that grassroots on the ground door to door campaign to finish strong. Let's give people your campaign website, Senator, because you are the key to a majority, the, the absolute insurance policy. Jim Justice is going to win in Virginia, and we need you, and everything else after that is gravy, but we need you so people can contribute to their dollars to get an insurance policy on the Senate. What is your website? Yeah, you're absolutely right on that, Hugh. So Tim4MT.com, T-I-M-F-O-R-M-T.com. And, and as you said, and to remind the viewership here, uh, you know, the White House is critical. Of course, we want Donald Trump to win the White House. But if he doesn't have a Senate, um, they're going to impeach him day one. You know, my opponent, John Tester, voted to impeach Trump twice, voted against the entire Trump agenda uh, when he was in and has voted for the entire Biden-Harris agenda since they've been in power. So if Trump wins, we have to have the Senate. If he doesn't win, we absolutely have to have the Senate as a firewall against more of this progressive craziness going on. So it's as you correctly uh, articulated, it's an insurance policy. Not only is it an insurance policy uh, against craziness happening from the left, it's an insurance policy to protect our Constitution because they've said very clearly they want to eliminate the filibuster in the Senate, add two more states, D.C. and Puerto Rico, that's four more Democrat senators, than they want to, quote, unquote, reform the Supreme Court, which, as you and I well know, means pack with progressive justices uh, so they can rubber stamp a progressive agenda. So th there's so no many Senator reasons why. Senator to be Sheehy. I just had John Thune on, and Senator Thune comes from a neighbor state to you. He spoke at length about being out in Montana with you, and we also agreed national security is the— you, You've been shot at by bad guys. Our fleet is being shot at by the Houthis every day. Our men in uniform, soldiers in Jordan, Iraq, Syria, are being shot at every day by the enemy. And we've run out of air defense missiles, or almost have. We have not got enough ships. These guys are exhausted. I got family in the Gulf, so I'm really, this is personal for me. But you're a veteran. You've been shot at. You've got your friends still there, I'm sure. Some of them are generals probably now. What about national security and the need for a Republican Senate and the need for Trump to win? Well, well, I'm not that old, Hugh. I, I appreciate the, the nod, but most of my friends are, 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 are commanders. But yes, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, what's going on with our national defense is, is disgraceful. You know, uh, and this is a longstanding problem that has gotten exponentially worse in the last three and a half years. And the number one problem uh, is we don't have leadership, uh, civilian leadership, focusing on combat lethality for our military. Our, our men and women, their, their number one priority must always be the ability to close with and kill the enemy. That's just, that's a fact. That's what they are meant to do. Whether it's flying jets, driving submarines, or shooting a rifle, they have to be ready to kill the enemy in defense of their nation. And that priority has been obscured these past several years by basically whether it's, you know, uh, carbon emissions of our fighter jets or whether it's DEI initiatives in our manning, we have to return our military to, to focusing on combat lethality, number one. Our defense acquisition process, as you correctly pointed out, is broken. It is broken in so many ways, and we're seeing that right now. Uh, as we're attempting to supply conflicts around the world, we don't have enough bullets, bombs, planes, ships, uh, or people to do all of the above. So we have to return our defense industrial complex to a meritocracy uh, so that instead of just awarding a handful of big primes every contract, no matter how slow or bad they are right now, we're watching Boeing you know, every single day trip over its own shoelaces. We have to return some competition and meritocracy to our defense industry. So our products are affordable and they're getting made fast and they're getting made in the best possible quality they can for our warfighters. Now, um, Tim Sheehy, Israel's on many people's minds. They have done an extraordinary thing with our F-35s and refueling. They've taken out the strategic defenses of Iran. This administration and the Democratic Senate has said nothing about that. What do you think about Israel's right to strike at the head of the snake? Uh, of course, absolutely no questions asked. They have the right to do it. And I, I personally think it's, it's offensive for us 
to sit back and question a nation's right to defend itself. Um, I mean, not only is it the height of hypocrisy, I mean, we, we were at war for 20 years after 9-11, uh, striking anything in the world that moved that might even look like it might be bad for us. And, and now, you know, Israel's been under constant assault. I mean, obviously, the Jewish people have been under assault and persecution for, you know, over 3,000 years. But the specific assaults on the Jewish state uh, since 1947 have been constant, uh, literally nonstop. They're surrounded by enemies and attacked all day, every day, all the time. And then, you know, the one time they choose to finally strike back in a strategic manner after the most disgusting, absolutely disgraceful, uh, murderous attack we've seen in the history of their nation. And now we have, you know, these pundits in the Atlantic and New York Times and, and the UN, you know, deciding whether or not they have the right to defend their people. It's disgusting. Uh, I, I, would, I will not stand for any of that. Uh, Israel unquestionably has the right to do whatever it takes to protect their people. Uh, and I'll stand behind them all the time, no matter what. Now, I want to close, Senator, by talking, Senator Debishi, he, by talking about Native Americans. I don't know how many reservations you have. I don't know how many sovereign tribes there are in Montana. But it's always been a weakness with Republicans, and I don't understand why, because opportunity is what is needed. Freedom is what is needed. They've got to be able to do with their land what they want to do with their land. Tell me about the Native American population in Montana and your connection to them. Well, no, it's a very important point, and, and they're about 7% of our state. Uh, and it's incredibly uh, an important set of issues that we're facing right now. And you're absolutely right. Traditionally, uh, our Native American uh, partners have, have voted almost exclusively for the Democrats. We're seeing that change a little bit in many ways. Uh, we're not going to see, I think, a whole lot of shift this cycle, most likely, simply because Senator Tester, with his extreme seniority and, and his position in appropriations, uh, has a very uh, influential uh, role over over uh, Indian affairs. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of, unfortunately, change for us. We, we've made the effort, absolutely. Uh, you know, actually just, you know, a few days ago, I was sweating with, with some of our Native leaders, which is a, a, a really fascinating Native ritual. I was invited to partake in and did so. Um, but what we have to do is unleash uh, the ability for them to self-govern more effectively. We have to give them the freedom to grow their economies. Uh, and that all starts with safety and security. They don't have enough law enforcement on some of these reservations to enforce basic law and order. I mean, you, you want to talk about San Francisco and the California lawlessness. I mean, that's at a whole nother level. Uh, there, there, are, there are reservations that are millions of acres. I mean, the size of Connecticut, twice the size of Connecticut. And they'll have two to three to four to maybe five police officers to cover that entire region. That is not enough, not just to pull over speeders and help someone change a flat tire. That's not enough to in any way provide the safety and security these communities need uh, to become economically prosperous. And what we're seeing is, is massive opioid, fentanyl, drug trafficking. We're seeing violent crime. Obviously, uh, missing and exploited uh, uh, Native women is a huge issue all over the, the Western United States. So what I hear consistently from our tribal leadership is, yes, they want infrastructure investment. Yes, they want economic development. Uh, yes, they, they want better opportunities for jobs and businesses on the reservation. But guess what? The first thing they need before any of that's going to work is a basic level of public safety so their men, women, and families feel safe on the reservation. And that's, I believe, a very clearly a Republican priority for this nation. Um, and, and I think, I, I hope that they start to realize that uh, a Trump administration supported by a Republican Senate or Republican Congress is going to secure that border, which is a huge source of instability on these reservations, and make sure that their very communities nice are safe. question, Tim Sheehy. I want to know your website again, but I also want to ask, do the native leaders ever ask you why we're spending so much on people who are crossing into our country illegally and so little on their reservations and their tribal communities? They absolutely do. And, and I think as we see this movement of, of many of our, our native tribes saying, you know what, why are we sending billions of dollars to other countries when our own infrastructure on our own communities is collapsing? Why are we giving millions uh, uh, to illegal immigrants, free housing, free health care, free food, free uh, basically whatever they want when they get here? when we can't get basic services for ourselves. So I think that awakening is happening. I think the border crisis and the fentanyl crisis on the reservations is really an acute awakening for them uh, to start looking at that issue. So yes, they are. And if folks want to learn more about our uh, campaign and support us in these final days, Tim4MT.com. It's absolutely critical we have the resources to get out the vote and finish this fight to the finish line. Tim Sheehy, Tim4, F-O-R-M-T, Tim, F-O-R-M-T.com. Thank you, Tim Sheehy. I appreciate it. Keep up the good fight. Look forward to seeing you inside the Beltway soon. All right. Thank you, sir. Take care.